Uh, so I'm Allison. I'm the campus consultant here from OrgSync. We're actually located in Dallas, Texas. Um, we have been around for about seven years now. We work with 400 or so campuses across the country and a couple international schools as well. Uh, we were started at the University of Texas at Austin by several student leaders who were just frustrated managing their organizations using Facebook and Google Docs and all of these other things. So that's why they came up with OrgSync to streamline all of that and do it from one centralized place. To start, I'm just going to show you a little bit of an overview of how the system itself is structured. So there's a few layers or tiers to the system. Up at the top is your actual community, which would be Whittier. <laughs> and then within it, you've got what we call the umbrella. And your umbrella is really more of an administrative space. That's where your professional staff, student workers, maybe graduate assistants are helping manage all of your organizations and managing different processes like the budget process, um, event registration, and your organization registration. And that's also where they're pushing out information to you all as student leaders in your organizations. So they're the green circle, and then you all would be these orange squares. We call them portals, but they're your student organizations. And from there, that's where you're managing your own members, you're communicating internally, posting your meeting minutes, all those kinds of things but then you're also receiving information from the LEAP umbrella above it. And then down here at the bottom are all of your individual users. So you create your individual account and then you're going to join any clubs or organizations that you want to. And um, she was mentioning that we do, or we're going to import you all into the organizations you belong to. But if there are any additional ones that you wanted to join, I'm gonna show you how to do that. And to log in, you have this login link over here, whittier.edu backslash orgsync. Or you could just go to orgsync.com, either way. Uh, I think eventually the goal is to put a login link on your existing whittier.edu website just to kind of make that process easier. But for now, you can go to that link. And then once you do log in, it's going to take you to this page here. This is the community homepage. This is the landing page that every student, every staff member sees when they first log into the system. And is everyone logged in currently? I'll give you a second to log in if you want to. This page here, your community homepage, and this is the landing page that everyone sees when they first come into this system. The idea here is that as, an, as a student leader, any important information you might need, you can gain access to it just as soon as you log in. Up here at the top, this is your individual user toolbar, so everything there is going to be specific to you. On the left, you've got different offices or departments, and you'll notice there are icons underneath them. So any important information, public information coming from ASWC, Program Board, LEAP, you can easily get access to those things. You have bookmarks down at the bottom. Those are just external links. So if you need to jump into EMS or any of these other, any of these other sites. You have a promotion banner up here at the, t at the top. So just when you log in, make sure to take a look up there. It's going to be a rotating banner, just highlighting things that are happening on campus. And then you have this feed of information. Again, that's coming from your LEAP office, so make sure to take a look there because it's going to be important updates or reminders, things that you need to know as a student leader. And then you can also scroll over to where it says organizations, and that's going to show a feed just coming from the organizations you're a part of. On the right, you'll see some community-wide events once we add some to there. So always take a look there as well. And now let's say you're a new student on campus and you want to find out how to get involved and what opportunities are out there for you. You're going to go to browse organizations over here on the left. And this is going to show a directory of all of the different clubs that are available. Um, as we were saying earlier, we did import all of those organizations. So as of right now, there's not a lot of content in there. But if you're a student, you can search by keyword, by category. If you wanted to know more about one of these clubs, you can click on the name of it and it's going to show you their public profile. Once we get you in there and you all are able to start populating it, then you can really use this as a marketing tool because those new students are going to try to find out how to get involved. And if your portal doesn't have any information, you don't have a picture there, it's likely that they might move on and go join a different club. So keep that in mind once you do get in there. And now if I've come to this list and I don't see the organization that I want to join or I want to start a new one, I'd go to register new organization, click on leap, and then it's going to put me through the registration process. So you'd fill out the form, it goes to your administrators, 
they approve it, and then it would create the portal for you. If I found an organization I did want to join, there's a couple of ways to get into a club. You can request to join, you can put in a password, you can be invited into the club, or you could set it as an open organization and anyone can join it that way. Now I'm gonna go into a demo portal just to see what it's going to look like once you get in there and you get it all populated. So I'm gonna go into a activities board. Okay, so this is somewhat what it will look like once you get in there and you start populating it. We're looking at this from an administrative perspective. So as if we're the president or maybe one of the high level officers so we can see pretty much all of the information. The first thing that you'll see is this welcome message that you can customize. You can get creative here, add pictures. I've seen some organizations where they will actually embed their Facebook groups page into their OrgSync welcome message. So you can actually like their Facebook page from OrgSync. So again, you can get creative here. You'll have a feed that's specific to your group and then this profile of information. So this is what I was mentioning a minute ago when new students might be looking through that directory of organizations and they click on yours. This profile and the welcome message, those are the first things that they're going to see. So you do wanna make sure that you present that in a way that's appealing to potential members. <coughs> Once we do add the events component, you'll see your upcoming events over here on the right. Any other social media sites that you use if you wanted to include the link here? You've got your bookmarks. And then if you have any members that have birthdays coming up, they're gonna be down here at the bottom. And then over here on the left are all of the different tools that you're gonna to use to manage your members, communicate with them, post your meeting minutes and resources and things. So the first thing we'll look at are the people. When you click on people, this is gonna show you a directory of all of your membership. If you wanted to know more about someone, you just click on their name, you can see their profile of information. Now, if you go to all people up here at the top, this is where you can create subgroups. So you're gonna have your administrators. Those are the people with the highest level of access. They can edit, change, delete anything. But then you're also going to have members, officers, maybe potential members or fans. If you have different committees within your organization, this is where you can subgroup people and those are really going to be important because that's how you target information to people and that's what determines their permission level throughout the portal. So in getting started and set up, this is kind of step one. Um, your welcome message, getting that all set up and then making sure that you've got these subgroups in order. And then to put people into those subgroups, you would just go to manage and you can put them into as many as they need to be. From the people section, you can also invite people into the club. You can put in a message, you'd put in their email addresses. You'll also, you'll also wanna make sure that you have a committee or you have a subgroup that you put them into initially. So then that's gonna send them an invite to join your group. If you've sent them an invite and they have not accepted it, you can resend it every three days. So if they're not accepting it and you need to harass them, you can do that every three days. Also in the people section, you can download a roster. I should note that only the administrators can invite people into the group. They're also the only ones that can pull this roster and they're the only ones that can make other people administrators. So you do wanna be careful as to how many administrators you have in a group because they do have the potential to mess a lot of things up if you give them uh, the ability to edit and change, delete everything. So be careful how many administrators you have. But this roster feature is nice because it's going to pull all of your members into an Excel spreadsheet and have their names, groups they're a part of, and their basic contact information. So if you've ever had to try to manually enter information or keep this up to date and current in organizations you're a part of, this is really going to streamline that and make that a lot easier. That's also why it's really important to make sure that you have all of your members in your group so that this is an accurate roster. Okay. 
Now we're going to go down here to your administrative settings. Again, you only have access to these if you are an administrator of your group. And the settings are going to be really important because the first thing that you'll see is this profile of information. Again, we did front load all of your organizations into the system initially, but there's a lot of information that's missing from that. So once you do get in there, if you are the administrator, this is also another step that you're going to want to make sure that you have completed. Get all of that information in here. Because next year, or when you need to re-register for the school year, all you're going to have to do as the administrator is go to your settings, update the new content. You're not going to have to refill out the form all over again each year. You just update the new content. If you have new officers and so forth, you submit it. It goes to the LEAF office. They approve it, and you're good to go for the year. So it makes that process a lot easier. This is also where you can upload a picture for your organization. So you'll want to make sure to do that. Then you're going to go to your permissions up here at the top. And this is where those subgroups that you created, that's where they're really going to come into play. So for all of these tools over here on the left, this is where you can